methods. Okay. How did Morgan explain the evolution of marriage, family, and socio political organization? How did Morgan explain? The evolution. Marriage, family, and socio political organization. And how did others, other evolutionists? Or you can say, how did others disagree with his explanation? I did make minor modification. I said, how did others, not other evolutionists? But I don't think the question is really accurate. This is more accurate. OK. Mm. See, this question is one way of uh, discussing this theory. So tell me, how do we go about this? First of all, what is this evolutionism to which Morgan belongs to? What is that called? Hmm? Classical evolution. Exactly. This is called classical evolutionism. Classical evolutionism. There is one more evolution that is called neo-evolutionism, which comes later. So this is classical. We use word classical to something early. Early, old, long ago, traditional, like that. This is classical. This is classical evolutionism. Later, some evolutionism came that was neo. So this is classical evolutionism. OK. Now tell me some important anthropologists coming under a classical evolutionism. Mention three. Taylor. Hmm? Me, Taylor. Taylor? Hmm. Boas, uh, like... Boas, no. Taylor? Morgan and Fraser. Morgan and Fraser. Morgan and Fraser. Morgan and Fraser. There are others also, but I can confine to only these three. Okay. Can you tell me the spelling of Taylor? T-A-Y-L-O-R. Exactly. T-A-Y and not T-Y. Because there is one, another Taylor. He was T A Y. This is T Y. So Taylor, Morgan, and Fraser. Okay. Of these three, we already discussed one evolutionist. Can you tell me? I'm just covering this through questions. Fraser in religion. Fraser under religion. Yes. Also himself. Taylor also in religion. Yes, Taylor also under religion. Okay, we covered Taylor and religion and Fraser and religion. What did we say about Fraser? First magic and then religion and then science. Okay, and that is the nature of evolutionism. Evolutionism. Evolutionism is a way of thinking of an institution in terms of evolution, in terms of how it was changing. If you are thinking something in terms of how it has been evolving, that's called evolutionism. And these people in the 19th century, many and some anthropologists, 
looked at everything in terms of how it was evolving like this. So thinking like this is called evolutionism. They are called classical because started early and later some others came, so they were called classical. Remember, it is not that at that time they were called classical. They won't, they won't have been called classical at that time. But only later they would be called classical. Okay. In fact, they won't have even known that they would be called evolutionists. It was again later they, was, they were called evolutionists because some people proposed a different way of looking at it. Okay. So looking at an institution in terms of how it is evolving is evolutionism. That is one way. Or looking at society also is about cultural trait is also society. What is a cultural trait? Trait is a part of culture, various traits. Matrilineal is a trait. Polygyny is a trait. Okay. How religion is a trait. How something is evolving. Trait evolution. Or entire society evolution. So thinking in terms of evolution is evolutionism. Because there are others who thought differently. Okay. So Taylor, Morgan, Fraser, Bachofen and others are there. But we confine to these three. Because uh, remember, we did everything from the viewpoint of the previous questions. Okay, what were the questions being asked? And uh, whether we would be in a position to answer them. Okay, so it is from previous questions we did this. Uh, so this is classical evolutionism. Okay, and what was the status of data at that time? Can you tell me how did... Uh, these people get the data about other societies. Question they didn't do field work. They did through questionnaires. They sent questionnaires to Christian missionaries or to administrators. So that was about data collection. They did not go to the field and stay there. That came much later. Another thing about this thought is that thought gives ideological or idea-wise history of anthropology. You can use thought at many places and if you are good, okay. And I don't know, well, you may consider it, I don't know what to say. I, I, <laughs> I can tell you, if you master this book, if you can understand, this is much, much, much ahead of any literature available now. You can go through any book, okay. Very crisp, abstract, but very challenging. What all you need to do is decode. Okay, so it, it helps immensely if you study at home, give one reading and go through the discussion here. Immensely. And if you doubt, have any doubt about my judgment, read any alternative book. I, I took this because publisher told me, sir, this is number one book and we are not able to make any dent. So I had this book before, but I never looked at it. I want to look at it because why it remained in number one. So you can also go through this and then ch chapter by chapter you compare which, which is crisp and uh, which is accurate. Okay, that's all. And then some people did Makanja also, that is far worse. But this is considered to be number one book and I want to compare these two books. So um, so what this book does is that it is very analytical, accurate, and crisp. Okay? And very accurate. This is same as the Green Book, right? Same book. Same book. It's just that Oak Ridge uh, published this book. He removed my favorite uh, Bruce Lee photo and then he put this. <laughs> so, same book, Oak Ridge. Oh, okay. So I thought this would be a big hit and uh, it didn't happen. So even I got Makhanja, sir, I, I find it hard to understand it also. This, this is more crisp and more uh, concise. Crisp. Only one review said that this is better than all. 
and I, I just, I mean, sales show that this hasn't made it and I was surprised. I thought people would say, wow, what a move. <laughs> so <laughs> what I want to tell you is that um, examine the question and then see this, and you can see that this book is much better than even the examination. I don't think for example, the question itself, I don't think that is right. For example, he said, how did other evolutionists look? Other evolutionists really didn't look at. How did others look at is the accurate question, not other evolutionists. So you will see why I could, I, why I was confident of this book and my book was very, very, it was because I followed Marvin Harris book. In fact, this was written long ago when I were taught anthropology, uh, long, long ago. And I just wanted to revise this book and that's how I got into anthropology once again. Otherwise, so yes, um, there is one book which was a Rise of Anthropological Theory. This book went by Rise of Anthropological Theory. It's a standard book, Marvin Harris, Cultural Materialism. So it was on the basis of Marvin Harris, three-fourths of the book is written. Marvin Harris is a great anthropologist. And what he judged, he, what he did was he judged all other anthropologists in a very analytical way. What other books have done is that they didn't have the sense of judgment. The way they covered is that Taylor did this. And how do you evaluate? He got this PhD, he got this prize, he got that. There's no judgment. Marvin Harris, by being himself an anthropologist, he looked at things critically. In fact, I said, it is from Marvin Harris I understood how, you, how to criticize, I said. To me, reading Marvin Harris was like a rite of passage to the world of social science. Um, first serious book I read is Marvin Harris after I completed my beta long ago. His style of critiquing clearly and boldly while offering his own perspective inspired me. It is this thing that I picked up later. Okay. Uh, in fact, I wrote a very moving introduction long, long ago. This long ago, which I how I thought of social science. I'll explain that later. Uh, so Marvin Harris, uh, the, what I understood from Marvin Harris is that he understands the thinker and he says, he gives the gist of the thinker and in his own way he evaluates. And uh, that was the spirit I understood and that was how I thought social sciences should be written. And then what happened was that after Marvin Harris last book on thought, Nobody else wrote the same way. So we don't have Marvin Harris criticism after structuralism. Okay. In fact, Marvin Harris made a remark on, on this because his book was titled Rise of Anthropological Theory. He said this cognitivism, interpretative, many things came. He said, these are not part of rise of anthropological theory, but rather fall of anthropological theory. That was his argument. So Marvin Harris did it in a very personal way with his own theory, with his own thought. So I liked that. And then, so I went by his book, both these books, Cultural Materialism and Rise of Anthropological Theory, the theory, Rise of Anthropological Theory, written in 1970s and then uh, Cultural Materialism in 80s. So that's what I did. And then later in the second edition, when I had to do this cultural uh, interpretative and then, I had to read many articles and to summarize. I found it very difficult, but then I did it. Okay, so this is how the book uh, is written. So, and in my second uh, uh, reading of anthropological thought, I read the latest books, and in the latest books, I found the authors were not in position to judge. They would simply say that, say this, say this, and then say he got this PhD, he wrote these books, he inspired research but they didn't have the courage to evaluate a thinker on the, on the basic terms of his thought, okay? So I didn't find any book which is on par with Marvin Harris. Uh, in fact, they don't even understand how various concepts are interlinked. Uh, they don't have an independent judgment like Marvin Harris said. So I read it from Marvin Harris. So the book has a unity. And that's why it came out well. And uh, on the theories, Marvin Harris did not have anything to say or he was no more to say anything. Then I followed others and I took a lot of time. So everything came out well, except that 
maybe i could have included some personal details and then more could have been done i would include it in my, in the revised edition but so far that came out really well um so what i advise you is that there is a lot in it but it depends upon how you take it how much you take it and i am here to help you help you help you if i said yesterday you reason listen to recorded classes because i was disappointed on monday you didn't turn up i thought okay if these people are not interested i won't be interested so i reciprocate if you are more interested you will take more from me if you are not i don't so and that is one thing that is one other and another issue is that when i am starting it for the first time i do so elaborately excited and and when i finish a book i lose interest unfortunately you are in the second stage <laughs> so i am working on religion i do it so extensively and once the book is over but the advantage is that the student already had a book so there is so much in me you can extract so because i am not learning i say little so it is for it's for you to extract more so in fact when i was revising this book i offered thought module and we did it so extensively and then the book is out and after the time not really so much interested okay so there is a lot went into it so it depends on you to take my best okay uh, recently also one person who wrote this thought test others did not take the test only one person took the test and he wrote it well and then i asked him the judgment i said he said the book is far ahead of others there is so much and i read two three times to write these answers okay and then you will also see that uh, my judgment is that except for evolutionism diffusionism and functionalism others did not understand anything you may find it sweeping and next of course they understood something of culture and personality that's all they have no clue to cognitive postmodernism interpretative or uh, uh, specific significance of cultural ecology or structuralism no clue or they know what is the social structure in ratliff brown structure they have no clue so some standard material extremely poor material and they are just right and that is the reason why the question paper also is very shallow in question paper also is not critical they are just asking do you know something please write the, the questions also are like that not really critical and analytical but then we have done a very good analysis we have done much ahead so you can you can do this okay so i am telling you there is a lot depends on you so it all depends on you so where are we so this is it so evolutionism is about traits like this are this okay now mm, come to this particular question now what is the question how did morgan explain the evolution of marriage family and socio political organizations and how did others disagree with explanations and i tell you basic argument in terms of your answer number 1 the answer has a core logic that's one you should provide this core logic and then core logic is one but core logic is not enough is not enough okay um one more thing about this examination is that i believe our because our thought is much ahead of others unless you explain to the examiner he is not likely to make it make out of that way that is my conviction how do you make out number 1 apart from core logic give quotations quotes mention books and give examples remember he won't be in a position to judge your answer independently you should drop that idea he is not going to judge nor the evaluator is going to have an answer in which from that answer 
he can evaluate you. No. You have to struggle to tell the examiner, I know, in a way that he can understand. How? Core logic, quotes, books, and examples. Okay. Okay. Um, so, um, so this is how you should ex explain. And remember, examiner, whoever he is, he will be in a position to understand examples. Examples he will understand. The only part in this thought is that that abstract reasoning, I don't think examiner will understand. That is my understanding. But if you are quoting, he can make out. Giving books, he can make out. Okay, any information that you reveal, he can make out. Examples, he can make out. And then, diagrams. Diagrams. In fact, in its first edition, the book was a big hit. It was published by Jawhar Publishers. And uh, coaching institutes prepared notes on this basis. So that was the reason why it would be hit second time also, but it was not. Okay. Um, so that was, so where are we? Uh, that time people got very high score based on that book because they didn't have any other book. Uh, so, and when they, they did it like this examples, I told them give a contemporary examples and quotations and that's what they did. Okay, I am yet to get high scores on the basis of this book. If you can make difference, I, I would love it. Okay, uh, so core logic, Examples, diagrams, quotes, and books. Okay. Um, so when you are reading this book, you, you look at the core logic, and then what is the additional information you can give to that uh, to give a good answer? Okay. You can give a good answer. I mean, this is how you should. So which I believe if you do well, you can... You can really impress. And more importantly, this thought is there at many places in the syllabus. If you understand well. If you don't understand, you cannot write. If you understand, then you will be flexible, like the way we read the village studies in the last class. When you are flexible, you know, you just read it, it flows. You will write at a variety of places. And wherever you mention, let me tell you, examiner is bound to be impressed. There is no doubt about it. Okay. That makes it truly anthropological. Okay. Core logic. What is the core logic? Core logic here is the question is divided into uh, three aspects. How is it divided? Marriage. Evolution of marriage, family, and socio-political organization. Okay. In fact, though he said marriage, family, and socio-political organization, there's only two questions. Marriage and family and socio-political organization. Okay, what did he say about marriage and family? The core logic is that Morgan thought marriage evolved from promiscuity to monogamy. Morgan thought from promiscuity to monogamy. And how did he think from promiscuity to monogamy? He went by kinship classification system. Kinship classification system at one time classificatory and next descriptive. So we have done this in term when we are doing kinship terms, classificatory means bundled, descriptive, one, one. So more than thought it was classificatory to kinship. And then um, and then he he made another thing that was uh, a classificatory to kinship. Was, was also paralleled with pre-civilization to civilization. So this is another thing. So one trait and sometimes another trait and sometimes society. This is what evolutionism is. So one trait is evolving like this, another trait is evolving like this, and society is evolving like this. Okay. Morgan gave society's scheme and traits scheme. Please understand the core logic. And let me tell you another thing about thought is that 
even after understanding the core logic, you have substantial things to memorize. Of course, I would say entire anthropology is like that. A lot to memorize, especially compared with our options. There's a lot to memorize. It may not be compared to geography and history, but, but within sociology, anthropology, maybe political science, reasonable social sciences, anthropology is more. So T1, T2, yes. So T1 is one trait evolution, T2 is another trait evolution, and yes, is total, total society's evolution. What Morgan did was T1, T2, yes, and then correlations. He said society at this stage will have T1 at this stage and T2 at this stage. Please understand the logic. So for example, classificatory before civilization and descriptive after civilization, which means he was classifying society, he was classifying traits, and then he thought all these were interlinked. Tell me if this understanding is clear. Because this, in a sense, is evolutionism. So, so, so everything it did was in relation to society. Exactly. And some everyone. People, some people talked about only one. For example, Fraser talked about only religion, like that. Some evolutionists talked about only traits and some evolutionists like Morgan interlink. So he provided a comprehensive picture, comprehensive. Do you know, now when we think of Morgan, we think of some vague anthropologist. But at that time, Morgan was an intellectual. Marx read the book and impressed and recommended to angels. Morgan was a, was a contemporary intellectual. Okay, so when Morgan said that the book Ancient Society was a kind of a, uh, was a big book they talked about. Okay, and Marx thought Morgan independently understood certain issues of fundamental significance. It looked somehow that some one, one person found out the very origins of human societies. Morgan was one such person. Okay. If my book is missing, I, I thought it is missing in a personalization and background. I mean, I would do it in a more interesting way if I have to revise. It, 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 was, it was hugely theoretical and logical rather than interesting and uh, contextual. More like Marvin Harris. Marvin Harris itself is considered very abstract. So it is like that. So Morgan was a great intellectual at the time. So these were the things your T1, T2 is was like this. Okay. Mm. So tell me, do you understand the essence of evolutionism? Sir, uh, before this, you said tracing of institution, how they came about as evolutionism, right? Ah, exactly. That is evolutionism. So we are calling it T1, but this T1 can be called I1 in institutions. Anything. By, the, by that we mean a part of culture or the totality of culture. For example, when Morgan is saying savagery, barbarism, civilization, what is he doing? It is talking about the society. That's about society stages. So Morgan thought of technological stages and stages in other things. And then he interlinked them and produced a book, Ancient Society, that shocked. People thought it was a very comprehensive book. So tell me, is the you, you will go to details of the sequences, but I want you to understand the core logic. Is this clear to you? You have a flexible understanding. When you have a flexible understanding, it flows to other places. When you have the cut and paste, it will stay only here or here. So I focus on the total understanding, flexible understanding. You do the memorizing. You, do, you can't uh, memorize more points than what is mentioned here. It's, each paragraph is full of points. You, can't, you don't need more facts than them. There are so many, so many quotations, so many thinkers, so many arguments. You don't need more than that. So understand the core logic. This is the core logic. Is it clear? 
So, for example, what Morgan did was Morgan gave a society's uh, sequence. So, in his scheme, he said savagery, barbarism, and civilization. And within savagery, he gives savagery some stage, barbarism and civilization like this. So, this is about society's classification. And then he would say, uh, if the society is at a barbarism, barbarism middle lower. Barbarism, lower barbarism, there is something of a trait. And it's like this. So all these sequences are linked and provided a comprehensive picture. So in that comprehensive picture, a part of it is about marriage family and social political organization. And what did he think about the social, political, or economic organization? He basically thought, at one time politically, control was based on kinship. Another thing is that, I mean, kinship based, and then non kin, territorial, territorial based control systems evolved. He was right. And obviously, at one time it was kin, clans and lineages played a role, and later states played a role. So from first it was non-kin, first it was kin, and later became non-kin. Okay, non-kin based organizations, the state, he was right. And then another thing is that he linked things to materialism and more particularly private property. For example, during promiscuous, promiscuous stage, there was no private property. And uh, I mean, in a promiscuous stage, uh, there was, a later some group of men versus group of women. And then uh, they became more conscious of who is meeting with whom. Um, and then there were fights. And finally, over a period of time, monogamy. In this conflict, evolution of private property played a role. Which means private property was somehow responsible for monogamy. And angels, Angels were also thinking like the role of private property in creating societies like this. Remember what Marx knew was that Marx knew about industrial civilization and Maxim he read about um, medieval times. But Marx won't, won't know anything about pre-civilizational. And Morgan wrote work on pre-civilizational. And he wrote work on pre-civilizational with Techno-economic factors as the basis. For example, uh, in savagery, lawyer, invention of speech, subsistence on fruits and nuts, middle, fishing and use of fire, upper, bow and arrow, lower barbarism, pottery, middle, domestication of animals, upper, iron smelting. What Marx saw in this is that these are all techno-economic variables. So Marx was happy that society's evolution was thought in terms of techno-economic variables change. So he thought that Morgan independently arrived at idea of materialism from the societies, from his knowledge of the societies, which were pre-civilizational, about which Marx did know much. Tell me, is this clear? Is it clear, Sunil? Yes, sir. Hmm. So that is what it is. Sir, who is an angels? Angels. He recommended to angels to go through it and then try to see how. Is, how is he an important person like like Marx, that famous? No, I Marx never knew. It was angels. Sir. E N G E L S. Who is he, sir? It Marx, is there in it, Marx close associate. Okay, it is there in book, but Next I don't. Marx Engels is the most important person. Remember, in the all communist literature, you see two people with birds, right? One is Marx and another is Engels. And next important person is Lenin. So yes, Marx yes. and Engels are the theoreticians, and Lenin is the father. And after that, Mao will make one later. But these three are three important people. They are close friends, co collaborators, and also Angels was a financier. So they're second important person after Marx, after Marx in the communism, second, okay. So Marx is a kind of a leader, Angels next friend. 
So this was Morgan's book was an important book in the former USSR. Okay. So you, the idea that Marx could be impressed, that he was such a well-read person, Marx could be impressed means that that was Morgan's stature. Now you, we take him as one vague anthropologist, but he was not in his lifetime. Okay. But then why did he now become like one vague anthropologist? It was because many of the things he said were not true. That is the problem with classical evolutionism. Okay, because this is supposed to be trait evolving like this, trait like this, and then mix up most of the sequences were wrong. How did we know most of the sequences were wrong? As we got more of ethnographic data, it didn't come out like that. It seemed, it means he just shocked the people, but after closer scrutiny, they were not right. Also, was there an element of judgment in his, like... Uh... There was so much of judgment. He was a lot, a lot of imagination. Imagination. The use of savagery, barbarism, so these terms are like very... Uh, an anthropologist will see it That's in a very different... That way. was the stage of anthropology at that time. Now we are not supposed to use them as savages, barbarians. Okay, though we think of them like that. So, <laughs> these words, these words were dropped. So, but at that time, uh, these were used like that. Uh, in fact, it took some time for the world to respect the other. And in that aspect, anthropology made a, an important contribution. Okay. Um, but they were called savages, savages, barbarians. So it is true. Not like that at all. Okay. It took some time for people to think these words themselves involve a judgment and we should not use. Okay, there was a judgment, of course. Okay, but I mean, that was the time, that was the times. Ethnographic data was not there, much ethnographic data was not there, fieldwork tradition has not developed and these kind of prejudices were there. But with little data, they, it was a fertile uh, imagination. So that's how they, they got this. Okay. Uh, but, uh, uh, Please. Sir, uh, in evolutionist, all the evolutionists link it this way, and that's why we have it. All the evolutionists did things like this, even if not about the society. One is called an evolutionist only when he talked about one trait or one institution in terms of how it changed. That is evolution. All did that. At that time, that was a way to think about culture. Suggesting that we were like this at one time. But how did they basically do this? They did what is called now or even then compared to merit. Compared to merit. Okay. In compared to method, in compared to method, what they did was something like hunter-gatherers of present-day society. Okay, because they have the questionnaires. From the questionnaires, they have foragers. Okay, we know that we were at one stage foragers. So many thought that okay, the, we were similar to the present-day foragers. Not exactly, but somewhat. Okay, so, so what the basic method was that, see, we evolved, go through the limitation. See, they are saying we evolved like this from A to B, C to D, like this. Okay, but how do you know about A? Because there is one society at A now. There is another society at B now, which means contemporary societies were taken as a reference point to the societies who are no longer existing. Not that they took exactly, they were not that foolish, but then uh, more or less. And in Marvin Harris evalu evaluation of comparative method, uh, not really finding out 
how exactly the contemporary society may have different from the extinct one is the most serious problem of methodology that classical evolution is used but this is the basic procedure they used and then remember, just one second they don't have much data they didn't visit a or b they had some idea of a and b so somebody is doing like this for example classificatory okay so many people had classificatory so many people had descriptive so it may have a world like that somebody like matrilini matriarchy or matrilini somebody like patrilini so different societies different institutions and then linked and sometimes when those linkages are not matching they felt okay something of the past uh, was surviving though it was not functional that's called survival okay so so um something of the past was surviving so that is what compared to methodis so something like this is supposed to be on society is supposed to be at this stage okay but something of this stage is here why because it is surviving it, is, it hasn't disappeared which means that wherever there was it was not logical they simply explained okay things won't change suddenly something of the past could survive for example we discussed magical beliefs why nails should not be dropped it is a survival from the belief in magic like that so why do we uh, hang certain kind of uh, nuts the survival of the belief in uh, magic so certain things survived so they thought that um, wherever the things were not matching they talked about survivals so finally they believed that they had an idea of how the societies evolved and also believed they have reached the highest possible state okay so they made their societies as the highest that was the reference that was the reference and then how various societies evolved okay using the comparative method so this is what classical evolutionism in comparative method is so did they only uh... relate to the society in proximity or did they related to randomly any society any society any society you mean you are talking about geographical proximity right yes sir geographic no it was all over the world because they sent questionnaires to the people across the world there was colonialism so christian missionaries so they sent the questionnaires to administrators and missionaries and they got the data and so many books were written around that time and also the the there was not such a conviction on what is called scientific method biases in uh, data gathering biases in theorizing those those things were not there at that time okay so full of sweeping generalizations one evolutionist would say how matrilini came from patrilini and some other evolutionist would say how the reverse happened all kinds of explanations were then survivals uh, just now as you pointed out you pointed it out as a criticism of uh, uh, ah, evolution those are the survivals wherever they could not explain the sequence uh, but also it is their uh, idea of this is uh, this is proof for evolution also it can exactly. be that way also. proof for evolution okay the because case. because something is surviving i mean they would they would explain their theories making survival as an exception it is like that and it can also be proof it also confirms their theories also, instead of criticism okay ah, okay fine it confirms that it evolved that's true it evolved like that yes one can think of like that also they evolved like that and it survives why is it still there it is because Uh, things don't disappear suddenly okay so now tell me uh, just one second um somebody like uh, in uh, 
some some hunter gatherer in nagaland using a gun okay to hunt so in what way do those hunter gatherers would be different from the our earliest hunter gatherers gun would be absent that is too obvious but then what kind of environment they would have lived that is maybe more difficult to guess what kind in what kind of environment we at, at hunter gatherer stage lived probably the hunter gatherers now are living in marginal environment but hunter gathering stage at hunter gathering stage men lived uh, in an abundant environment so if it was an abundant environment what kind of uh, cultural features would so what marvin aris thinks is that marvin aris belongs to a school called cultural materialism what he thinks is that uh, he thinks that whatever the culture you are thinking you examine it in terms of how that culture came from materialism material factors so these are hunter gatherers what is the basis for mate what is the material basis these are horticulturalists what is the material basis so you can just can't uh, think uh, you just can't take the stages just like randomly and then uh, think of all kinds of lines so marvin harris looked at everything in terms of from cultural materialism so marvin harris thinks comparative method in itself is not wrong foragers of contemporary foragers will have some resemblance to uh, for a, our, we as foragers long long ago okay but then in what way they would resemble in what way they would not resemble that calls for understanding the material base and analysis which according to marvin harris classical evolutionists did not have so marvin harris looked at everything from cultural materialism tell me is this clear Sir, but Morgan talked about territory, which is again a materialism. Uh, won't that go against? Him? That's territory is materialism. Yes, territory is an economic resource. So one can work out uh, in a desert area how would a hunter gatherer be compared to forest in a tundra region. So Morgan has one such an analysis. You can't assume all hunter gatherers at any stage are same. okay so marvin harris thinks that inaccurate application of uh, contemporary cultures is what behind the failure of classical evolutionists but remember even when they fail they, the broad sequences can be right for example we discussed fraser magic religion and science broadly one can say that seems sensible and from kin to territory that also is sensible okay promiscuity to monogamy might not be sensible but uh, possible uh, marriage may have been we don't know about that mm. when there was promiscuity uh, but uh, definitely this kind of rigid sexual morality is related to private property rigid sexual morality might not have been there in hunting gathering stage so mm, there is always some kind of truth in what they are saying but at a very broad level but more importantly uh, they they made uh, uh, they they proposed a way of looking at things across societies first of all one should propose a theory right if one one proposes a theory and another person proposes no it is not right and then another theory comes but this theory is coming as a reaction to the first theory so which means the first theory contributed there is another way of evaluating a theory a theory can be evaluated not only in terms of whether it is right or wrong but whether it is fertile giving rise to new theories then also that theory is good if something gives rise to new theories that is good okay so classical evolutionism is the first systematic effort to link a way to link a way to look at a purpose a grand scheme grand scheme also ancient society is a grand scheme okay and then from that others have uh, credit okay 
What is meant by examination approach? I gave you the core logic, quotations, books, and then in the application of contemporary comparative method, you use the present day societies, how the present day society is different from the old. Make it lively, that's all. Lively, lively, lively. Okay, and then use uh, your general understanding of anthropology. For example, we discussed kinship terminology, Hawaiian system, and then that it is not based on promiscuity. We used how marriage evolved. So this book integrated these things. Okay, you can use these examples or you can use other examples, different examples, but on the whole, make it lively and contemporary. Contemporary. Make things contemporary. Is it clear? Bring it to the contemporary. This is one standard tip I can give you about anthropology. Bring finally to the contemporary dimension. What does it say now? New contemporary examples. Okay. On the whole, make it look lively rather than very high fly abstract logic and then examiner should be impressed. He won't be impressed, you can be sure. Okay. Is it clear? Remember in many chapters, we are not going to write things which examiner cannot understand. I did not make this statement in other chapters. He will understand. But thought is like that. So you have to understand where, where we may be ahead of others and where we are not. Okay. Especially GS type knowledge examiner knows. Contemporary examiner, examples examiner easily knows and he will appreciate. But when it is going to be thought and abstract, he is he's less likely. Because exam you will be evaluated by a generalist who has some idea. Okay, he may not have anything to do with thought as such. Optional paper also will be evaluated by generalists. Sir. No, uh, but in anthropology, there is no nobody who knows every branch of anthropology. In fact, very few anthropologists, they may be uh, teaching caste or social anthropology maximum, archaeology. You can't get a faculty who can teach entire archaeology. It is like that. That is another problem with anthropology. Maybe that's why exam is like this. It's too diverse and nobody has a command of all these areas. Nobody has a command. Most diverse, if you ask me, after GS is anthropology. <laughs> no connection between physical and archaeology. What do you do? Okay. So you can't expect teacher to know them. They're just not possible. Okay. So you have to make the connections and try it. Is it clear? And go for diagrams. Diagrams like this, how is like this? You put it them, put in terms of classificatory and then this practice. Okay. I think I, I'll give this as an assignment on Padlet. You please write. So let us write answers during the thought classes. Okay. Any questions? Next, we're going to historical particulars. Okay. About Taylor and Fraser, this is the general framework and no special questions on Taylor and Fraser, they are not likely to ask. Either they will ask you on classical evolutionism as such or on comparative method. And then you can write about Morgan and we discuss the general method. This is enough. Next, take the question on historical particularism. Let me tell you, only one question is possible. That is this, and only one way, historical particularism sharpness. <laughs> okay, major questions are not possible. Okay. Actually, there is so much information in your book, sir, a 10 marker. So much. On this chapter. So much. Mm. So much. Yeah. And also I'm enabling you can write so much. Okay. Historical particularism. Historical particularism, see the name, number one, do you know, it is not that the people called at that time it was historical particularism. That is the rule number one. People are called later and was 
was called historical particularist. Why was he called historical particularist? In fact, historical particularism was not a kind of a school. It was some kind of a transitional stage. What he did was, Boas did not like evolutionism. He didn't like evolutionism. He was a critic of evolutionism. His question was, uh, even if one society has the same thing as another society, how do you know it came in the same way and are it is serving the same function? Okay, something like um, a clan. Clan may have come in one way at one, one place and another way in another place. So even if it is same, how do you establish the correlation? And then, so he believed that these comparative, these classical evolutionists were, ma were making very uh, sweeping use of comparative method. Same traits may have come from different cultural, different causes, he said. And then he looked at another school that was diffusionism. Diffusionism also he found uh, equally that too sweeping. So basically, Boas got against the theory. These people are too sweeping. So he felt, th there is one unusual method here. He felt, don't theorize. Don't theorize. You first study. Study in detail. Because you have to see in what sense that society is unique. Why are you looking at in terms of a theory? Why do you want to go to a society and then see uh, on what scale it is evolving? How did it come and how is it going to at what stage of evolution this particular society is? Why do you need to look at like that? So treat a society as a unique thing and gather data. Okay, so he was against sweeping generalizations and he was for gathering data. So his students say that Boas did not think he belonged to any school. He was only critical of schools, critical of schools in the sense that the schools were making sweeping generalizations. And so that generalization should be avoided. Okay, so he proposed a method that is stop theorizing and gather the data, which most people think is sensible. But Marvin Harris would not do one among them. Marvin Harris would say, would say that uh, excessive generalization is wrong. Rigid theorization is wrong. But to say there should not be any theory is not correct. There should not be any theory is not. I find this is a very important observation. Because when you want to observe, what is it that you will observe? For example, if you are asked to narrate your yesterday, most likely you will narrate it in terms of how many hours you studied. God applied. But is that the only thing you did? You are doing so many other things, isn't it? On a screen, we watch only one particular action. What is hero doing? How is he reacting and things like that. But on screen, so many things are happening. Do we watch? They form the background, but hero or villain is the focus. Which means our perception is always selective. And that selectivity is based on what our theory. For example, when somebody calls your name from a distant place in a crowd, you, can, you turn around, why is your name? So the point is, it is not that you gather all the data and theorize, that is not true. 
you gather the data in the first place on the basis of a theory, but theory should not be rigid. Tell me, is this, is this clear to you? Or you think you can get any data and then you will theorize later? Don't you think? Uh, Andrew Bettley went to that village and then looked at cast class, uh, power dimension, which means he has a theoretical perspective. From that theory, he looked at the society. Without the theory, what is it that he would have observed? So rigid theory is not the same thing as no theory. No theory won't lead to an observation. That is to say, no theory won't lead to the idea that there shouldn't be any theory. Leads to lack of organization in observation. And that is what happened in Franz Bo's work. He got so much of data and there was no coherence. Did that, there's so much of so many traits. Tell me, is this point clear to you? There are some questions on, now the question is on, what is the relationship between theory and fact? Take this question, theory and fact, short notes. Tell me. Are theory and facts linked? Complementary. Can be complementary. Okay. It means from theory, facts can come. And from facts, theory can come. Franz Bose thought from facts only, theory should come. Theory should not come before. But Marvin Harris says, both are true. So here he uses more, more philosophically. There is an inductive method as well as deductive method. What is a deductive method and inductive method? In inductive method, case one, case two, case three, and then generalization. People may have a confusion between what is inductive method and deductive method. If you have done math, you shouldn't have any confusion. For example, you may have solved the problems on mathematical induction. 1 plus 2 plus 3 up to n is equal to n into n plus 1 by 2. How do you prove? You take n is equal to 1, 1 is 1, n is equal to 2, 1 plus 2, 3, n into n, n is equal to 3. And then you say, suppose n is equal to k, if you assume that n is equal to k, the statement is true. And is it true when n is equal to k plus 1? If it is true for n k, then it is true for k plus 1, then it is true for all. So what the theory says is that go by empirical and generalize. Marvin Harris says that is only one method. Sometimes you have a theory first and then look out. And many scientists are that. In fact, in the case of Newton, there are cases where Newton first made a th theoretical proposal and the one who was talking to him was shocked. I don't remember the exact thing about, he said something about uh, even astronom astronomy. And the one who was listening, he said, how can you say like that? Then Newton thought it, he was an implicit theory and then he, he did it formally. And many scientists have a power of intuition. Okay. The scientists are not arriving at the theory from observation. No, they have a theory first. They have an idea that this is how things should be working and they check. In fact, creative scientists are uh, far more imaginative and somewhat crazy. Okay, it is part of that craziness when others accept, they call it science. And part of the craziness that is not accepted becomes remain personal to them. Newton had so many such crazy ideas. People are shocked that Newton thought of all these things. Okay. So uh, we know that uh, theories evolve from intuition, not from experimentation. Experimentation confirms. So Marvin Harris observation on Boas and historical particularism have huge implications. That's why I like Marvin Harris book. Okay. When he says something, you know, 
what he says is not confined to that it it says something else also okay so he is making an observation regarding connection between theory and fact and which he says french boss missed the connection so there should be theories but theories should not be rigid so historical particularism focused on particularism look at the name historical particularism particularism means uniqueness historical find out why it is what it is historically not generalizations so historical particularism is a kind of anti generalization okay it is not exactly against anti evolutionism anti anti diffusionism but it is in general anti generalization okay so um franz boas provided a break by critiquing this excessive generalization but in that process he improved our understanding of need to be more methodical in our approach okay so that's all it is next later we will cover diffusionism and functionalism but i want you to see how you are doing it tell me is this clear to you is the approach clear to you first so i'll give you a question on morgan or maybe the same question okay you can take the same question but i'll create a padlet and then write answer okay. last date for submission make it after it is okay make it after test 21 okay fine fine sunday okay but tell me is this approach clear to you see just little effort from you you are going to be extraordinarily good in this area and then if you carried over to other places marvelous but little effort from you because already your work is done and then and if you don't do and then if you find it abstract you are wasting sir what is theory is my approach clear to you sweta hmm yes sir no yes sir okay thank you ah huh. nikhil you have something to say no sir okay vishal clear to you yes sir you i mean you will be so good that you have to worry whether the examiner will understand you it is a luxurious state not many times you have that luxury you have no clue to the question right <laughs> so yeah not only that you have clue you will be so confident that you have to take extra care to see that examiner understands that's what we are going to do okay but once for little effort from your side be regular and also these are all interlinked process it is one thought came as a reaction to another thought so if you understand that then you will understand that. and right free and independently and very very clearly okay so you please read uh, diffusionism 